welcome to the third episode of the Digital Transformation Live Series. I'm Ali Sufastai, an AI program leader in Valley. Our live interviews have been designed to develop the knowledge of applied data science and advanced analytics in different industries aimed to touch Industry 4.0. These live sessions are held every Friday with the presence of one of the university professors, industrial managers, and experts in the field of Industry 4.0 and digital transformation. Today, we will discuss digital solutions and responsible mining. And this is my honor to introduce my guest, Mrs. Laura isko Keiras, a mining and investments analyst in British government. Laura is an environmental and sanitary engineer, graduated from the Federal Center of Technical Education of Minajarais, and occupies the position of mining and investment analyst at the British government in Brazil. She has experience working in the mining sector since the beginning of her career, which started in the mining and uh, steel making company, Nexta Resources. After that, Laura had the opportunity to work as a mining intern in the Department of International Trade for the British government, and as an innovation assistant at Mining Hub, the first open innovation hub for mining in the world. There she worked directly with the directors to support the development of innovation in the sector. Laura developed her graduation thesis about the impact of mining 4.0, on responsible uh, consumption and production in iron ore mine. Welcome, Laura, and thanks for accepting my invitation to be with us today. Thank you very much, Ali. It's an honor to be here with you today, one of the greatest specialists of the subject in the world. So I'm really glad to be here with you today. And thank you for all the uh, participation, participating today as well. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, as the first question, Laura, I would like to know what story led you to your current role? I mean, I mean what's your background? So I believe that you already uh, told us a little bit um, what's my background, but just to contextualize, um, I am from the main mining state in Brazil that's called Minas Gerais. So mining has been part of my life since I was little. And when the Tailing Dam disaster happened in Mariana, uh, the city where my father grew up, that's when I decided to focus my career in mining. So I thought that I could support the transformation of the sector by being an inside force, you know. And in 2017, as you mentioned, I had the opportunity to work as a summer intern in the um, in extra resources. Uh, so this was my first time working inside the mining sector uh, itself. And uh, I was completely in love and it told me that there was a sector that I really wanted to work. And um, when I started working at the British consulate as an intern, um, I was responsible to identify the mining companies main gaps and search new technologies in the UK. And that's when I fell in love uh, with technology and finding new solutions. Um, but when I was working there, um, the Brumadinho Dam disaster happened and it was really hard for us here in Brazil, and spe specifically here in uh, Belo Horizonte. And during that time, um, I questioned it if I really wanted to continue to work in the sector, um, but after a lot of thinking, I knew that I was on the right side, that I was doing what I had to do to um, make a difference and contribute to the transformation of the sector into a more responsible and sustainable one. Um, so when I, Go, when I went to um, to be um, an innovation uh, intern in Mining Hub, uh, I had this opportunity to really be inside of the innovation side of the mining sector because it was a really collaborative environment with loads of things going on, startups and all the stuff. And uh, when I came back to the consulate as a, an analyst, 
um, I was uh, I was responsible for conducting um, the innovation projects for mining, uh, creating real connections between the UK tech ecosystem and the Brazilian mining sector. And uh, this is a sector that I really want to build my career around. So not only on mining, but creating um, these connections and seeing what are the main uh, solutions and technologies specifically in digital world uh, that can contribute to this development. And um, as I want to do this, I developed my environmental engineering graduation thesis uh, about the impacts of industry for, uh, on responsible consumption and production in iron ore mining. And uh, that's my, why I'm here today as well, to talk a little bit more about these uh, as my um, specialist view. Thank you so much, Laura. It's, it's amazing because you started your idea about your future career or job based on one horrible situation that happened in Brazil. I definitely yeah. can remember because it was a part of Valley and is my company. And I know that what happened uh, in, in Brazil, but you made this horrible situation as an encouragement point for yourself. And you made your career and your future job based on one horrible problem in your country and specifically in your area in Belo Horizonte or in Minas Gerais. That's great. And I, I love your job. You are a multi-dimensional uh, situation and uh, you can work with some international directors and uh, you know some people working uh, globally in the mining and specifically on the responsible mining i think you, potentially you can be a role model for the new generation of the mm -hmm. people who are interested in working in this area and that that's great and i'm i'm very glad to have you today but uh, laura the question that i have is related to the one key words that we are using every time. And the word is responsible mining. My question for you is that what's the correct meaning and concept of responsible mining, especially in the digital world? Really good question. So um, it's really important to uh, define these uh, to to direct this way into a, a more responsible. So we need to know what it is before, right? And um, so mining is never going away. We know that, um, but some people don't. And it's even more necessary nowadays in this digital world full of cell phones, computers, satellites, cars, and loads of other tech materials. And specifically now uh, with the necessity of new low carbon technologies, there's a huge mineral need to build turbines, panels, batteries, and all this stuff. And beyond that, um, some countries really depend on mining to generate jobs, increase GDP. Um, so it has a really positive impact in their economy, right? Uh, specifically here in Brazil, um, but many other countries. Uh, but as we know, mining has, is also responsible for many negative impacts. And um, I can mention water consumption, high production of residues and tailings, um, noise and air pollution, um, high energy consumption, serious community issues, uh, high impact in the environmental ecosystem, and many others. So, unfortunately, Brazil has witnessed this. The, has witnessed these strategies as we uh, that we mentioned in this past years, and. Um, because of that, we have uh, raised questions about the safety, sustainability, and responsibility of mining companies. And um, in this way, it's really necessary for companies and organizations linked to the sector to seek more sustainable solutions and guarantee processes um, and activities that generate less negative impacts. So um, looking at this big picture, um, to ensure responsible production and consumption uh, standards in the mining sector. Uh, it's totally necessary to achieve sustainable management and efficient use of natural resources, achieve correct management of chemicals, for example, and uh, all wastes 
uh, to reduce the release to air, water, and soil, and to minimize the negative impacts on human health and environment. And also um, reduce waste and tailings generation. So we do not have to build new dams and ensure the well being of local communities and safety to the employees. So um, that's what means responsible mining, all this stuff. And um, I didn't create all this stuff in my mind. I believe that SDG Go 12 is a good example of what responsible consumption means in production, uh, especially in the mining industry, as it aims to promote um, efficient use of energy and natural resources, access to basic services, and uh, sustainable infra infrastructure. That's perfect. I based on the you know the clarification that you had, maybe I can say responsible mining is a culture. It's it's not a new culture, but it's a culture because I can say this is a big umbrella and can cover many different aspects of mining. For example, in responsible mining, we need to be careful about the the society, about the, uh, the energy efficiency, about the greenhouse gas emissions, many things. So it's a big word and it's very nice, but I think mining companies right now is using just this word as a, you know, as an advertisement for, for the new mining. But I think we definitely in a digital world and digital mining, when we're speaking about mining 4.0 or using advanced analytics and AI in mining, we need to think about improve the role of mining, comp practical role of mining company to reach to, the, uh, to, to this responsibility. Because mining, as you mentioned, is a, one of the major industry in the world. And we are mm -hmm. receiving all raw material that we need from this industry. Yeah. So yeah, I think uh, your summary about the concept uh, of responsible mining was, was great, but it's a, I think we can write a book about that. It's very yes. different yeah. chapters really cool. yeah, included. Speaking about uh, digital work or digitalization, how will digitalization make mining operations more efficient and responsible? Yes, uh, we can write a book about this as well. Um, and you did, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I try. <laughs> yeah, so um, digitalization is a huge ally of this process of achieving sustainable management and uh, the efficient use of natural resources. So uh, digital solutions are able to bring uh, technologies that have the potential to transform mine operations and allow them to manage and min minimize failures, uh, increase process efficiency, uh, reduce costs, meet environmental requirements, um, reduce labor accidents, increase transparency and many other stuff. So um, through the use of these solutions, um, mining companies has, um, have um, vastly more data at their fingertips than they ever did before. So uh, to answer your question, there's nothing better than giving real examples. So uh, these solutions can be applied from the first mineral research to the port. So there are really good examples in different stages of mining that support the efficiency and the responsibility of the site operations. And I can uh, mention some, some of them. And um, the first one that I really like is using uh, remote sensing tools, uh, such as satellites in the exploration phase. 
Um, so you don't need to uh, differentiate that place or all or all the place to to find the uh, the res the reserves that you need. So uh, this solution can substantially reduce the ecological footprint of the operation and has great economic benefits as well, because you'll be more assertive in the areas that are going to, to operate and they're going to explore. And it also allows you to optimize energy and water use, uh, reduce tailings production, and carbon emission, that is a really important thing nowadays. Uh, another thing that I'm really amazed about is digital twins. I think that is really underestimated in Brazil right now and specifically in the mining sector, but I think that it has a huge um, potential uh, because you can uh, use it in the whole site operation and you can test new configurations to operate as efficiently as possible using the, inf the infrastructure that you already have. So you do not need to to create anything new. Uh, you can identify areas for improvement through the process, uh, optimize consumption of natural resources, uh, find the gaps of your, uh, of your infrastructure. You can apply uh, circular practices, um, try new, new technologies without having to buy them and really applying them just with the, the data that you have. So it's really good uh, and really allows more data transparency uh, with the communities, investors and all this stuff. Other great example um, is autonomous, autonomous, autonomous vehicles uh, because um, it compiles different digital solutions um, such as um, autonomous systems, uh, GPS, radars, um, artificial intelligence, IoT, and many others, and brings multiple benefits because you reduce the fuel that you're consuming, uh, reduce the operation costs and the maintenance, um, reduce the professional costs, reduce work accidents, emissions, um, decrease the waste because um, you have greater durability of the truck, so you do not have, uh, you do not generate uh, tire wastes or, and machinery wastes that much. And uh, you have better air quality because you're reducing the fuel consumption. And also you have less noise pollution because normally when you have these trucks, you have uh, less trucks in the operation as well. And another one, and the last, um, is just a few examples because there are many, many applications and many solutions. Uh, the use of satellite and AI to monitor tailings dams, that is one of the main technologies nowadays that has huge impact in the transparency and responsibility of mining companies because generates uh, really important data, uh, and not only to the company, but also to the authorities and the community that lives nearby that dam. Perfect, perfect. I, I really like, you know, just to to say thank you so much for promoting one of my completed projects many years ago about whole truck energy efficiency. I think 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, when I completed my PhD at the University of Queensland, actually, I didn't know what's the meaning of responsible mining in that time, but I completed my project <laughs> using AI methodology to predict the whole truck fuel consumption and later optimize some effective parameters to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emission and improve right. the energy efficiency of truck. Thank you for promoting my <laughs> PhD thesis. That's great, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, honestly, I, I didn't have you know, the clear idea about the responsible mining in that time. I wanted just to use the new technology to help body companies to reduce the energy, uh, the fuel consumption for whole truck. But mm -hmm. yeah, today I, I can see you find a way to promote my old completed <laughs> project. Thank you so much. So, <laughs> but if I want to summarize something, I think uh, some foundation that we have in mining 4.0, I'm speaking, for example, about the big data, transparency, connectivity, advanced analytics. This is not the foundation of mining 4.0. All of them potentially can help us 
to reach to the responsible mining because data can support us to visualize some events and uh, also the connectivity can help us to complete some benchmarking or predicting some problems before happening. You know, the tailing dam failure potentially can be uh, predicted by AI or by collecting yeah. data from satellite or drones. You can save the data on the, in a cloud uh, data lake, and then you can use advanced analytics to predict some failures before happening. And that's great. These are some many uh, application of AI and advanced analytics to reach the responsible mining. And later, maybe you can explain for us more examples. But I think the, uh, we will reach to the uh, many applications of advanced analytics or digitalization to improve mining sectors. But what is the mining industry's most significant area for using digital solutions? Well, um, I believe that right now uh, there are many areas to grow, but um, the area that I think in, in my all my experience um, that needs more attention when we talk about digital solutions is social transparency. Uh, I don't want to generalize, but social aspects normally have low priority in the in some companies, so it's normally seen as a burden. But uh, the well-being of those people can impact a lot in the operation of a mining company. Not only thinking about um, important investors that will consider the social impact of the company and license to operate, for example, uh, but focusing on the community's well-being itself. So specifically thinking about Brazil now, uh, people are really afraid of mining operations, you know, um, and they have the right to feel like this and to be like this. And um, because of what happened in 2015 and 2019, again, uh, people have the right to feel suspicious. And I think there are many digital solutions that could be applied to improve the re relationship between mining companies and affected communities because the mining is not, not going away and the affected community is not going away as well. So we need to improve this relationship. And for example, you can use virtual reality where people can visualize and understand in a more visual way how the operations work. Um, you can share real-time information about the operation in a more accessible way. And um, um, with information about tailing stems, air quality, noise levels, and all this stuff and uh, other things that can affect those people. And um, in Brazil, we have two digital applications that are related to tailing stamps and affected communities. And one of them is from Criativa, uh, a startup that developed an app with Samarco in 2019 with augmented reality technology uh, to pass um, sensitive information uh, in a gamified way um, so the population could know and follow and memorize the escape route in simulations of tailing stamps break. So if it happens, they will already know what to do because normally the simulations um, are really boring and people do not like to participate. So this is a way to bring the community to participate in the simulations. And I think this is a really nice way to use uh, digital solutions and uh, bring these people closer. And another one that is pretty new but necessary is the app Prox from Semig and Ibram, uh, two Brazilian institutions. And the app aims to inform uh, surrounding communities about the situation of mining and water dams. So uh, they are creating um, uh, interaction uh, channel between companies, city managers, firefighters, um, civil defense professionals, and um, community. And the application uh, has one of its functions, the issue of alerts uh, in case of rupture, floods, and fires. And they are now inputting GIS layers 
um, with self-rescue zones information. And these people will be able to see, understand that map and uh, see uh, with the GPS where they are and if they are in a safe place at the moment. So I think this is brilliant, a brilliant use of uh, technology and digital solutions to bring community closer and thinking about the well-being of these people. Perfect. Those are great examples and case studies in this case. But uh, I think we have different driven, okay, uh, to reach to the digital solution. One driven, for example, is technology and data. That's great. It means that when we have access to the good quality of the data and the quantity of data give us this opportunity to go to the AI or machine learning, we can speak about digital solution. But another driven that you mentioned is important. It's some demand or for responsibility. Because if we if we send this message to mining companies that they they have this responsibility to be, uh, you know, to uh, protect their environment, for example, or support their community, or thinking about the, the, the social, something like that, it would another driven to reach to the digital solution in mining company. <laughs> Explain the great examples for us, but look, my question is what steps are being taken at a mining organization to be a leader in digital transformation? Because you mentioned digital transformation potentially can help us many good solutions, but what are what steps are being taken in mining? Well, um from what I've been seeing and studying. Um, the main mining organizations that are implementing digital solutions uh, right now started from changing the culture and mindset. Um, and I know that this is a huge cliche, but it's true. Nothing is going to change in the mm -hmm. company if the leadership and the employees do not believe in innovation and do not have a strategic view. And um, in the companies that I've seen that are really moving on with this process um, is that they are ident identifying um, the main issues and gaps of their operation. They are not uh, seeking um, uh, to implement digital solutions without, um, without a strategy. So I believe that um, people, need, uh, people are prioritizing and finding implementing these technologies, because normally what people are doing right now is implementing technologies for fashion, uh, just because it's uh, it's uh, in a, a really good position right now and it's on it's on the media. So um, in this way, um, these solutions um, are not discussed. They do not have the necessary impact that uh, they could have. So the mining companies that really uh, are leaders in the implementation of digital transformation are a leader in this uh, in this area um, they have strategies and um, it's necessary for companies to be able to identify them in the main uh, gaps of their operations before starting this implementation of technologies and then proceed to the implementation of solutions that really have connection and in a really assertive way. And um, connected to this, both things that I mentioned, the mindset and also this strategy and prioritiz prioritization, um, it's really important to create um, and maintain a network inside and outside, inside the company and outside the company that will be involved in this process, um, that will collaborate with this mindset change, uh, identification of these bottlenecks, 
uh, with the employees training and hiring and the development of new solutions um, tailored to the company, what they need and everything. So uh, in these, I mean the university and also other, other companies, because I think that uh, nothing is going to happen. This transformation is not going to happen if the mining companies do not collaborate with themselves uh, uh, to, to change all this scenario. Awesome. Well, I, I previously I talked about asking one question about the examples, how digital approach can solve practical challenges in mining. But in, to answer the, my uh, you know, earlier question, you mentioned many examples, and I think it would be good to jump to, and to the, my next question that I have for you. But please feel free to, if you want to explain more examples for us, but just to save the time. Uh, my, my next question for you is, uh, what are some of the new digital technologies or innovation that you are uh, you know, particularly excited about? Well, um, the first one that I'm really excited is 5G, because I think oh. uh, we are implementing here in Brazil right now. So I'm really excited to see how it's going to impact our current lives, but also the mining industry, how it's going to uh, um, make it, um, make this transformation um, move on faster, how this is going to happen. So I'm really excited. I, uh, this is going to, this was implemented in Brazil, um, in some areas of Brazil last month. So this is pretty new for us. And um, I think that this is going to, to make things go faster in the in this transformation. But what I'm really excited about uh, is um, satellite applications in mining, specifically to monitor tailings dams. I know that I mentioned a lot of tailings dams here, but I know that you know why. Um, but um, it it's now technically possible to combine INSA and GNSS. A global navigation satellite system to achieve very high level of automation for tailings dams monitoring. So this can address an, a lot of challenges for monitoring uh, those dams because normally nowadays they are doing um, uh, without uh, automation. Uh, but with the optical imagery, you can measure and detect various parameters that can indicate issues with the operations or stability, you can measure like millimeters of the dam. So this is pretty new and it, it can change the scenario that we are in here in Brazil because um, we have more than 900 tailings dams and uh, half of them is in Minas Gerais, the state I live, and oh. more than 40 dams are in emergency situation that needs to be monitored. 24 per seven. So um, here, and, and just to, to share a little bit about uh, the work that we are doing at the British Consulate here in Bello, um, the team uh, has recently supported the development and uh, the launch of the Integrated Center for Environmental Management, uh, where we supported um, uh, the, um, the implementation of satellite applications catapult technology, with the Minas Gerais Public Ministry and the Minas Gerais government. And these uh, tailing stamps will be monitored uh, all the time by these uh, organs. Um, so this is, I think that this is going to change a little bit the scenario here where I'm based. So this is a really great example of um, um, uh, implementation of digital solution and that has a huge impact in all lives of these of the people that are uh, live uh, close to these uh, dams. Perfect. It makes sense that some you know exciting things for you is related to your region, and it's about the the starting point for you, environment, and protecting the people in Minas Gerais or in Belo Horizonte. That, that's great. So, but you mentioned 5G as a new technology for connectivity or transfer the data. And also you mentioned using the satellite data for gathering the data. But I would like just to add something uh, to this excitement 
topics that you mentioned, because gathering the data using the new technology, same as drones uh, or satellite images or something like that, can help us to reach to the ag more accurate data, for example, for tailing dam. 5G can help us to transfer this data. But after that, I think we need to focus on analytics. Because when you're speaking about mining 4.0, you are speaking about collecting data, transferring data, making prediction models, making optimization models, and at the end, making intelligent decision uh, algorithms, okay? So I think it would be, uh, it would be good to think generally and having the, the comprehensive and integrated vision for future. And if we can connect all of these technologies together, we can reach to the, uh, you know, an, a, a comprehensive solution for some problems that you mentioned, for example, for tailing dam uh, failures. Yes. Uh, but uh, Laura, we know that, you know, traditionally, uh, mining companies are focusing on productivity. And some project that can help us to make more and more money can encourage them to invest. It's, it's a traditional manner, but right now, I'm, I'm not speaking about the recent years because in recent years, everything has been changed. And now we are facing with a new culture in big mining companies. And they are thinking about, for example, more safety, thinking about decarbonization, environment or something like that. But what benefits have you seen in mining companies encouraging them to invest in digital transformation and responsible mining? Yes, as you mentioned, I already told a lot of um, um, sustainable uh, and also social um, benefits. Um, but I think that one of the main things that is really important for the mining companies is the economic one. So uh, I think that is one of the main ones, uh, if not the, the, the principal one. So um, I think that with the implementation of digital solutions, um, you, uh, you can increase 10% of uh, your asset value. This is a recent research that told that uh, the, when well applied in the operation, uh, and you have a, a, a and it has uh, really focus on um, um, uh, operational efficiency. Um, you have the potential to increase ten percent of your asset value. You can reduce um, your project development time in fifty percent. Um, you can reduce your late error detection in 60% and reduce 35% uh, of wasted resources. Uh, of course, these numbers depend on multiple factors because each mine is a mine. Uh, so um, we, we need to really see what are the main variants, but this, uh, we have real numbers that can explain these factors. And also, digital solutions are not ex really expensive, not all of them, but the majority of them are not really expensive to be implemented. Uh, so we, you have a uh, kind of quick return of investment when you have it well applied in your operations. So um, it's not like hard science that you need, um, that you need uh, a lot of investment and uh, it, it will take like four or five years to be developed and you have normally like in months in one month two months um this return of investment uh in your operation perfect so i can see many benefits potentially uh have you know the, the digital transformation and can encourage the mining companies to invest in this area but definitely it's just one side of the challenge so it's a benefit 
And we have many, we are facing with the many different types of challenges in mining companies uh, to use the digital solution. We know that digital solution can help us, for example, to improve energy efficiency or reduce the greenhouse gas emissions, uh, improve safety, etc. But we know that we just in the beginning point in digital yeah. solution. Other industries already touch industry 4.0, but in mining, we are just in the beginning step. Yeah. Uh, what are the challenges facing mining companies in using digital solutions? Well, I think that for mining companies to adopt industry 4.0 solutions, um, the main obstacles right now are structural, mainly related to the costs of investing in new technologies and innovation, and the difficulty of implementing and integrating the solutions that you mentioned, so integrating the solutions in the sector and in the operations. Uh, the lack of protection against cyber threats, because this is something that really is really important in the digital world. And I think that we have a lack of a skilled workforce, for example, uh, poor communication infrastructure. I'm, I'm thinking about Brazil right now. Um, and a lot of government bureaucracy. Um, so the sector has been slow to engage in digitalization process project, as you mentioned. Um, and even though in recent years, the rate of investment in innovate, innovative projects and, um, and digital solutions has increased in large mining companies, uh, the mining companies make use of equipment considered uh, innovative in the 50s. Um, and in addition to that, few companies measure and record data. So it makes the process of, implement, of implementing digitalization even more difficult because mining companies do not store their data correctly. Um, and for the integrated development of the entire chain to occur, mining companies must improve their ability to transform data into important inputs to solve their business challenges. Um, I think they do not have this mentality right now, but it is something that we need to improve. And cybersecurity is one of the main challenges, as I mentioned before, because um, the convergence of information technology and operational technology uh, makes the companies more vulnerable to continued rogue activity in the sector. So I can imagine Valley, for example, what a challenge to, to have a cybersecurity system well developed because you need to improve in the beginning of the of the operation, right? You, you cannot like stop everything to implement a cybersecurity um, uh, system. Um, and um, the attack surface is only getting larger, larger with the increasing investment in digital. And uh, for example, a mining company will have thousands of connected devices in uh, right now. So uh, according to an EY study, um, understanding the cyber threat land landscape is the first and vital foundation step in the change to improve cyber maturity. So uh, mining, need, mining companies need to have a clear plan that forms part of their digital roadmap and risk management plan. And um, in order to improve digital implementation within companies, um, digital initiatives must be guided by a strategy, as I mentioned before. So um, I'm not going to repeat what I said, but I think that this is the main thing right now. Perfect, perfect. You mentioned many different types of challenges. And as you mentioned, for example, you know, the, uh, the protection right now is a big challenge uh, for uh, mining companies and they are thinking about some new technologies to protect the data or something like that but this technology kills me <laughs> because <laughs> every day to have access to any data from my company i need to insert many different types of <laughs> security code <laughs> and i hate this this uh, i believe that we need to change this approach to protect the data and also 
making a user-friendly approach to reach to the data for people working for the company. But uh, it, I think uh, you, you, you did a great job. You, you had a very good uh, interviews. Uh, I, but I we received one question just from Natalia. Thanks, Natalia, for uh, your question. Uh, Laura, I, I can't remember. Uh, I met you, uh, I think, last year in Minds and Money uh, in London in person. And hopefully yeah. I can meet you again this year yeah. in, in November and early December. But Natalia's question is exactly related to some topics that we discussed in Minds and Money in London. And it's about investors, okay? Laura asked us, uh, what do you think about the role of uh, investors to push mining operations and invest in digitalization of their plan? Well, I think that's completely related to a responsible mining because with all this stuff uh, that is connected to ESG uh, and connected to digitalization, all, all the impacts that digital solutions can bring um, in this area, for sure, uh, this can push, uh, can make investors push mining operators uh, invest in digitalization. So I, I think that this connection between responsible mining investors and digital uh, is something that will be uh, a game changer in, these, in this future of digital transformation in mining. Yeah, I, I think so. And I believe that, you know, the role of investors can be more clear and also be more important in the close future because yeah. we're, not, we're not speaking about <coughs> digital transformation 15 years ago when I was doing my PhD. We, you couldn't find any specific webinars or conferences uh, related to the digital transformation in mining. But right now in all conferences, you can see workshop, special yeah. panels or conferences for digital transformation. And yeah. one thing that is important for investors is that when we're speaking about digital solution, we are speaking about agile projects. And the companies can see the benefit, the created benefits by this solution yeah. quickly after, for example, six months or one year. And it's it's important point for investors because they want to return their money and their benefits very soon. And yeah. so now you can see, for example, in Minds and Money Conference or in AEMA in the United States or in SME or in all conferences, you can find some specific sessions and uh, webinars and workshops uh, related to the digital solution. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. We are now in the, at the end of this interview. Once again, I need to take this opportunity to thank you so much, Laura. You did a great job and thanks for thank being you. with us in this episode and a special thanks for all the participants in the live session. Uh, the recorded uh, version of this program will be available on your our YouTube channel very soon and in other uh, virtual pages in different social platforms same as LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. And thanks all of you. I hope you have benefited from the discussed topics and hope to see you again at the next event. Laura? Thank you very much, Ali, for this opportunity. I really hope that we can meet soon in London or in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's collaborate to transform uh, the mining sector into a digital and more responsible sector. Thank you so much, Laura. And for the people who have some questions, the time is over, but please be in contact with us through our email address, or you can reach me or Laura on LinkedIn. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.